All right, so now the problem is, in order to get data from all the applications, uh, you need to be root on the phone. Although I suppose you might be able to do it as just a user, but I wasn't able to. I copied all the system files too, so you might be able to actually get the user data just with the user's login. I'm not quite sure, but anyway, I did it by rooting the phone. Or, yeah, rooting the phone. So here's how you root it. This took me a while to figure out. Rooting the emulator. Uh, the jailbreak communities have written an emu a root attack just for this. So you get this thing called the root AVD repository, and I'll show it to you. Uh, in fact, it's here's the page. It's a GitHub repository written by hackers. It's not an official Google product. And here you are. You have to clone this Git repository. If you're on a Mac or Linux, you do it from the command line with git clone, and you git clone this URL. If you are on Windows, you download it as a zip file and unzip it. Both of them give you the same result. You'll get all these files from this online repository. So I'm on the Mac. So for me, I use this git clone that. So let me uh, just do it all. I'll get a terminal here, and I exited the phone. Um, let me um, just have a new terminal, because I like that one being in that directory. All right. All right. And I'm going to move into downloads and make a directory. Uh, Android demo. All right. And go in there. All right. All right, now I can clone this thing with git clone. That will download all the files for this root AVD product. All right, put it in a folder called root AVD. So I go in that folder. And now if I do a list, I can see there's a few things in here. There's a magisk. This is what we're doing. We're doing the Magisk bootloader. It's going to install this app named Magisk on the phone, which will give us root access. And uh, all right. Now, we need ADB to work from any directory. Before I showed you, you can run ADB from this special directory with dot slash ADB. That's where it actually lives. And by the way, the other thing I wanted to mention, if you make a shell here, you are on the phone, but you are not administrator. If you were administrator, you would have a uh, pound sign there. If you do ID, you're just shell. And if you try to become the super user, it'll tell you that super user is not found, I believe. I'm surprised it's not answering more quickly. But anyway, I think it will. It's not going to let me do it because the phone is not rooted. And that's what we're going to fix. So here, um, we need ADB to work from any directory. And I've already got it working on my machine. I've installed it, so I can run it from here. But you probably can't, so if that happens, you'll have to fix the path. And that's why I have instructions here, how to fix the path on the Mac and how to fix the path on Windows. So you can run ADB from any directory, which is necessary for this exploit. So now, you use root AVD. And this uh, was a little confusing. All right, it's just freezing up on me. I'll just hit Control C. Anyway, it didn't let me in and exit from there. All right. So I don't need this one anymore. I'm going to work from this one. All right. So now I have root AVD. If I do ls, this is the program root AVD. And here's the batch file to run on Windows. And here's the sh file to run on the Mac or Linux. So that's the one to use. Dot slash root adb dot sh. And the first thing you do is list all Android virtual devices. That's what this means. And you get a lot of junk. Now, what's going on here is you have to give a command. It's going to take the image of the operating system, this RAM disk got image. It's going to take the current RAM disk and patch it, adding more stuff to RAM, making a modified one, and install it on the phone. And so it has to get the uh, current it has to have a clean, unmodified RAM disk, which it's going to patch. That's how the hack works. And those images 
from Android uh, Studio, they go here, Library, Android SDK, System Images, and they're in different locations on Windows. So the product will notice whether you're running the Windows or the Linux version and show you where they are. So we just need to find the right one. And you may remember I did API 30 and 32-bit. So it is the Android 30 x86, which is up here. This is the one. So it tells you, it gives you an example of all the commands you're likely to run. And you can choose the right one, and that is the right one. Run the script, and here's the path to the root image of Android 30 x86. Oh, but I, and I think I had the Play Store too. Um, that's the one, because I chose the Android image with the Play Store in it. I'm pretty sure we're going to see. Now, when I try this, it's probably going to complain and say I've already done it. But let's, let me show you that, because I've already rooted this machine, this um, similar copies of the same phone. So it's running, trying things. Here's running the boot scratch script. And magic, ah, see, it detected that it was already patched, I think. I think it's going to quit and tell me that uh, that it can't run without a clean image to start from. But we're going to see. Well, let's see what the phone looks like. It's going to be uh, freezing like this. Oh, the phone's just sitting there. All right. Well, it should stop with an error message. I'm having some kind of problem here where it doesn't get there. I'm pretty sure I... Anyway, let me fix it. If I repeat that command, if I look in this directory, I'm going to see, I think, what the problem is. If I do a ls of that... Oops, control c I do an ls of that directory... Um, yep, this is the point. I've already run this exploit, so it made a backup image. So what I need to do is I need to delete this and replace it with that. So I'm going to remove uh, ram, ram disk dot image, and then move ram disk backup to that thing without the word backup. There, that'll restore. That'll put a clean version of the original RAM disk from Google there for it to start from. And now I should be able to run that exploit again. All right. And there it is. All right, let's see how it goes. Now there you go. Unpacking, it liked it. Unpacking RAM disk, um, extracting RAM disk, splitting, extracting, repacking. There it goes, dumping the modified RAM image. Repacking, it's moving right along. Okay, now it's going to try to install it on the phone and then reboot the phone. And it should do all that automatically. Yep, there it goes. It installed it on the phone, and it turned off the phone. Now, we need to do a cold boot of the phone. And for that, you need Android Studio. So here's my phone. And I could start it this way, but it wouldn't work. I need to do a cold boot. So you have to click this drop-down arrow and do a cold boot. Let me just slide this to the side to make sure it's caught. And I got a video. It's cold boot now. OK. And there comes the emulator, cold boot, requested by the user. That's what we got. And this will take a couple of minutes. And sometimes when I do it, it fails and never comes up at all. And you just have to cold boot it again. This is normal for jailbreak and root exploits. You are, in fact, hacking the phone. You know, nothing you're, 
doing is 100% uh, reliable anymore. But this works pretty well. Right, we're down to there in the instructions. Move these instructions out of the way to be less confusing. There's my phone coming up. Good. Now the next part is easy, but if you fail, the fix is irritating. So now you go into the shell, ADB shell, and as you see, I'm on the phone, but I'm not root. Now make sure you can see your phone because you only have 10 seconds to do this. When you try to elevate the super user, it's going to ask me for permission on the phone, and you have to say yes. And if you wait too long, it will deny you permission, and that's annoying to fix. So let's give SU. It pops up asking for permission. Now the easiest thing is if you remember to say grant. Now I'm going to deliberately fail here just to demonstrate how to fix it. Because that happened to me the first time. Okay, now I didn't answer soon enough, so permission was denied. Now if I try it again, it's going to not let me in. Permission is denied. Now it, that's, yeah, here now it says, oh no, it's, oh neat, it gave me another chance. Oh good. Well, that's an easy one. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to um, show you how to overcome it, even if that doesn't happen. This happened to me before. Uh, and you open Magisk, and I had to approve it in here. Um, what I did, it says you need additional setup, so I did this. And that's going to, I think, reboot the phone. And then I updated Magisk to the latest version because I was having trouble making things work. And I'm not sure that's necessary. But when I did, then uh, there was an option there to uh, approve the, to reapprove the uh, SU request. But we'll see. However, you may not have that problem. All you have to do is try again and it pops up again. That is not what happened to me before, but I already had Magisk running. Anyway, let's see. These uh, exploits come with really miserable instructions. So you kind of just have to play around and try things. The most useful instruction for this is an animated GIF showing him doing it on various operating systems. And you have to just watch that and try to pick up what he did on the fly. But of course, all the uh, Documentation is from earlier versions that aren't really the same and all that. So now, if I go into Magisk, I found a place in here where I could approve the permission that had been denied previously. And it was down here. But I'm not seeing it now. I think if I update, it will be there. There's some more options, but none of this. Super user, there we go. Yes, there it is on the second page. Good. Actually, I think super user access. I think I can just say... Uh, Apps and ADB. Let's try this. I'm just going to save a screenshot of this. To add to the project, I think. All right. I'm going to say apps and ADB. All right. Let's see if that did it. Now if I try to do S SU. Permission denied. Okay. That didn't help. Um, here's the request timeout. Super, ah, shell was denied super user rights. There it is. Okay, it's here. Super user notification. There we are. Uh, cancel. Okay. 
uh, request timeout. I super user access. I uh, maybe it's this. Well, um, automatic response. I could do grant. Maybe that would do it. Nope. All right. Well, that's why I wanted to actually do this again so I could find out how to fix it. I found a way to fix it. And I, oh, it was here. There it is. It's on the front page. Super user. Now I'm going to save this picture again. And I'm going to add this to the project. It's right there. Super user. You just click this, and now you're allowed. There, super user rights of shell are granted. That's what it is. So if you make a mistake, that's how you fix it. Good. Now I should be able to get in. There we are. OK. I just wanted to show you that, because it's very easy for 10 seconds to go by while you're puzzling over the instructions, and you missed that prompt. So now I have super user rights, and this is what you're going to need to copy the data off the phone. All right. So let me stop this one.